Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Raymond Yang. And I'm Edna Zia. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Chief Executive Defense District visits by officials to promote political reform. Protesters at Lejko call for MTR fair freeze and more minibus seats. And customs officers smash syndicate illegally distributing TV programs online. Chief Executive Lin Chenying has defended officials visiting districts to promote the government's political reform package. But he dodged questions about what would happen if polls showed most people opposed the government's political reform package. The government has been trying hard to drum up support for its political reform package since it was unveiled in LegCo last month. But the latest poll by three universities shows support for it was dropping. Of more than 1,100 respondents interviewed, only 42.5 percent approve of the reforms. That's down 2.3 percent from the previous findings. The poll also found 39.5 percent oppose the proposal, up 0.8 percent. Speaking ahead of his weekly cabinet meeting this morning, Chief Executive Lan Qingying said opinion polls were references for policy making regardless of their results. He sidestepped a question on what the government would do if the majority of people disapprove of the reforms. Nang said the question was hypothetical, adding that different polls produce different results because they have different questions. He also defended visits to various districts by officials to promote the political reform proposals. The chief executive insisted that the government needs to explain the package to the public continuously through various channels and using different methods, including meeting people face to face. But he refused to say whether the publicity campaign has backfired after officials were ridiculed during some of the visits. Leung also warned that people must think of the consequences if the reform package is rejected. He said it's important to think when the city will see the next change, when everyone can vote and change the current election by 1,200 member committee to one of universal suffrage. The government needs a two-thirds majority in LegCo for the proposal to be passed. But 27 pan-democrats have vowed to veto it because they say it's not true democracy. In August, Beijing decided that Hong Kong must choose from two or three hopefuls endorsed by the majority of the 1,200-strong nominating committee in the 2017 chief executive election. The pan-democrats have called on Beijing to review its decision, but the government insists that it can't be done. Constitutional and Mainland Affairs Secretary Raymond Tam has reiterated that the government has no plans to change its political reform proposals for the chief executive election in 2017. Speaking during a Legislative Council's subcommittee on proposals for the method of selecting the chief executive in 2017, Tam said the reforms are the result of two years' work and there are no plans to make any changes. Protesters were outside LegCo today calling for a freeze on MTR fares and more seats on minibuses. At the same time, Chief Executive Lin Chenying has been pushing the idea of having a joint checkpoint in Hong Kong for the express railway to Guangzhou. Vicky Wen reports. Before today's weekly Executive Council meeting, Chief Executive Lan Chenying said that as more people travel across the border, it makes sense to set up a joint immigration checkpoint for the express railway to Guangzhou. He believes that it will be more convenient for frequent travelers between the two financial hubs than separating immigration processes in Hong Kong and on the mainland. Lan said the joint system has the support of the central government, but if it is set up in Hong Kong, it will conform with local laws. <laughs> Meanwhile, around 20 members of the DAB political party protested outside LegCo against MTL's planned fare increases, which will start next month. They demand a freeze on fares and more discounts. Despite $15.6 billion profits last year, MTR plans to push up ticket prices by 4.3 percent in line with the fare adjustment mechanism, a system for raising fares based on the consumer price index and transport workers' wages that lawmakers approved in 2007. 
The protesters accused the railway company of not being socially responsible because it ignored the financial difficulties faced by the city's rural residents. Around the same time, New People's Party Deputy Chairman Michael Tan led a protest outside Lechko. The protester want to increase the number of seats in public minibuses from 16 to 20 to shorten queue times for passengers. The group also urged the government to subsidize minibus companies so they can replace their vehicles with green and wheelchair-friendly models. At Lechko's transport panel meeting, Under Secretary for Transport and Housing Yao Xingmu said the government should consider population growth and cooperation with other modes of public transport before increasing minibus seats to avoid creating cutthroat competition. As for train fare increases, Yao said if the government and MTR agree, the fare adjustment mechanism may be reviewed earlier, but the administration is currently waiting for the railway company's decision. VQN ATV News. The government has approved TVB's application to renew its license for the next 12 years. But there are some new conditions and the station will have to make more programs. Arthur Ercula reports. Commerce and Economic Development Secretary Greg So made it official this afternoon that TVB will have its license renewed for 12 more years from December until 2027. But to meet public calls for improvements in quality and variety, there will be some additional requirements. TVB is required to provide an additional four hours per week of positive programs in total on its digital channels, which are currently exempted from such programming requirements. These include current affairs programs, documentaries, arts and culture programs, and programs for young persons. All must be first-run programs with 60 minutes per week for each uh, genre. So said a decision was yet to be made on another free-to-air license application from Fantastic Television, a subsidiary of iCable. The Fantastic TV application is still being processed by uh, C, uh, the chief executive in council, but pursuing to the request of Fantastic TV, uh, the uh, chief executive in council will give Fantastic TV additional time until uh, September 15 of this year to provide uh, additional information. So said the communications authority will liaise with the prospective broadcaster and process the information it provides. Arthur Akiola, ATV News. Customs officers have smashed a cross-border syndicate that illegally redistributed television programs on the Internet. It's the first time that such a case has been discovered and two people were arrested in the operation. Customs officers have cracked down an online forum which was involved in distributing pirated programs from television channels. Officers seized four computers worth about $20,000 during the operation and found thousands of pirated programs in the computers. Two men, including the firm's operator, were arrested in Hong Kong on suspicion of infringing copyright. This is virtually our first case that we discover such a large quantity of local television program being uploaded on the Internet for download. Um, now, this is uh, without the um, authorization from the copyright owner. These acts may constitute a criminal offense, whether or not the uploader or the distributor is receiving any benefit. Authorities are looking for another core member in Macau, who is believed to be the person recording the programs. We believe this website is trying to make use of uh, people outside Hong Kong to do the recording process in order to evade criminal enforcement. Anyone who has been watching the pirated shows may also be in trouble. I wouldn't say that a watcher would commit any criminal offence, but um, there are a lot of ex exclusive copyright under the copyright ordinance for the copyright owners. So there may be a possibility that uh, they might attract uh, some civil liabilities. Fong added the forum had been operating for a year and had about 3,000 members. 
overseas. A strong earthquake shook Nepal this afternoon, sending people in the capital Kathmandu rushing out onto the streets. The quake came just weeks after another devastated the country, killing more than 8,000 people and destroying hundreds of thousands of homes. Today's quake measures 7.3 on the Richter scale and struck 68 kilometers west of the town of Namchi Bazaar, near Mount Everest. Shockwaves were felt as far away as the Indian capital, New Delhi. Philippine military officials visited an island in a disputed part of the South China Sea today to reassert Manila's claim to the territory. And police in the U.S. are searching for a gunman who injured three people in the same area where a mass shooting took place about a year ago. Arthur Urquilla reports. Three men were rushed to hospital, at least two with gunshot wounds, in the U.S. city of Santa Barbara. The three victims were reportedly in their 20s, and police were hunting for the gunman who fled in a white sedan. The shooting happened in Isla Vista, near the city's university. It's the same area where roughly a year ago, 22-year-old Elliot Roger stabbed three men to death in his apartment, shot and killed three others, then took his own life while fleeing police. The head of the Philippine military touched down on Filipino-occupied islands in the South China Sea to reassert Manila's claim to the territory. I'm visiting this place to establish the fact that uh, Pag-asa is a municipality of Palawan, and Palawan is a province of the Republic of the Philippines. And therefore, Pag-asa is a territory of the Republic of the Philippines. The visit comes amid concerns and protests over China's reclamation work in the disputed area. Political analysts say Beijing is building a major base. I think the construction will lead to deep harbors, will lead to uh, long uh, runways that can accommodate the biggest of the fleet. There will be refueling stations there uh, for ships and even the new aircraft carrier. The work has been eyed with suspicion by the U.S., but Beijing insists it is just asserting its right to build on its own territory. Riot police in Bolivia fired tear gas against indigenous farmers who were blockading a highway near the city of Viacha. They're angry at delays in the construction of a road to connect them to other cities and unresolved corruption cases. They blocked a highway, backing up some 500 trucks over a 12-hour period, and police were called in after the demonstrators began throwing rocks at vehicles. Fields and roads in Colorado were flooded following a week of rain and snow. A truck got stuck after trying to go down a closed road. Several roads were closed, and the flooding forced many schools to be shut. In South Dakota, residents returned to their homes after a tornado tore through them on Sunday. You never cease to be amazed at just how destructive something like this is, and just how it completely decimates these buildings. And um, you look at the pictures behind you, and there's uh, you know, there's just, there's no substitute for seeing it firsthand. The power of the tornado, you could just hear, I mean, it was just like it was just trying to suck you from inside out. I mean, just the pressure, the your ears and everything are popping. But it was, that's something I don't wish on anybody. That was, that was a scary moment there. In the stretch of area between the states of South Dakota and Texas, there were some two dozen tornadoes over the weekend, along with heavy rain hail and flooding. 